In my opinion, the word fishing and adventure go hand in hand, and we're about to go on one of the most epic fishing adventures I've ever been on. Well, what makes it so unique? The fact that you're on a pristine, untouched river with only one rustic outpost fishing camp on it. We're in Labrador, Canada at Hawk River Outfitters hunting Atlantic salmon. The adventure begins next on the new Fly Fisher. There's nothing quite like the people of Canada's East Coast to make a mid-countryman feel quite at home, especially in an extremely remote fish camp. There's a different attitude about the people of Newfoundland and Labrador, and believe me, it's infectious. It's all about the people, the food, the smiles, the river, and of course, the fish. Atlantic salmon are the perfect contradiction to the fine people of the Maritimes. They're grumpy, finicky, boorish, and downright mean. They have the ability to cause seemingly perfectly sane human beings to do crazy things in their pursuit for that one shot at a giant Atlantic slurping down a bomber. It's heart-stopping, all-encompassing, addictive, and unbelievably fun. Well, catching an Atlantic salmon is truly, you know, it's a wonderful emotion. I call it emotional experience. It really is. You know, it's a lot of fun and it's one of those things that once you experience it one time, you need to experience it again. And the more times you seem to experience that fish taking a fly, and that's where all the fun is, is where, where a fish, you know, takes the fly right in the beginning and you've done your job um, playing them and the, the fight is, is exciting. But when you know you've done your job to trick one of these fish into taking a fly, that's the excellent moment. You know, that's the most difficult fish there is. They're, they're moody, they're vicious, they're uh, vampires. <laughs> they sleep during the day and they, uh, they're awake at night. And, uh, you, you, you know, steelhead, they're really easy comparatively. So that's what drives you crazy and keeps you coming. Hawk River Outfitters is a true wilderness outpost camp. Accessible by float plane from nearby Charlottetown, Labrador, the camp is the only outfitter on the river. In turn, you literally have access to pools and runs that get zero outside angling pressure. After getting settled and set to fish, we immediately got hooked up with my guide for the week, Wade Mahar. I've never fished Atlantic salmon, so this is truly trial by fire. Wait, this is day one of our adventure here at Hawk River Outfitters. And, uh, you know, I thought when we arrived that the weather was terrible, but you don't think so, do you? Well, this is not terrible weather, not you like fishing. <laughs> this is perfect. We have well, the water's been low and really warm of late, and um, we've had some serious thunderstorms move through. What's that going to do to the fishery? Well, that will make the, the fishing a lot better, of course, because it'll bring the water temperature down and water levels up. Right. Are there salmon in the river right now? Yes, there are salmon. So as soon as that water temperature drops, are they going to start moving up? They'll move on up the river, yes. Right now, like, the water level is a little higher than it was, so we should hold up in these pools here and make for good fishing. So it looks like we might get some more rain tonight, so that, by all intents and purposes, that should mean that we have a pretty excellent week. Yep, we need more rain. The water levels are low. <laughs> all right, let's catch one of these things. When fishing Atlantic salmon in Newfoundland and Labrador, here are some of the regulations you must be aware of. Number one, as a non-resident, you must fish with a guide. You must use floating lines only, single barbless hooks, and you're not allowed any weight on the fly or the leader in any way. So 45 degrees down, yep. hold the fly rod. rod. All right, hold the rod up, bring it, come down slowly. Am I looking for the wake? What am I looking for? Yeah, you can, you can keep you trying to see your fly as much as possible at all times. Don't go too fast with the rod. Okay. Keep, the rod. Keep it slow. Try, try to slow your swing down as much as possible. Yes, try to cast right over that rock or just to the right of that rock. This one right here? Yeah. They're smart. He goes right for that rock. Yeah. That's the thing about shallow water. They'll, uh, the big fish will uh, cut your line on the rocks. They'll put their... Now, is that a salmon or a grills? Grills. Hey. Full of power, huh? Oh, yeah, strong fish. 
salmon in the hole. There you were. That's How nice. good is that? Be beautiful grills. All right, flies out. Here, I'll give you this. Okay. Wade, this is my first Atl Atlantic salmon. That's beautiful fish. Three and a half, four pounds. Yeah, it's a bit wet ways. Awesome. Okay, I'm gonna let him go. Yep. Here you are. Perfect. Perfect. Congratulations. You, now listen, I want to talk to you about something that was going through my mind since we started this morning. I've never fished for Atlantic salmon, and to do something like a riffle hitch, which is very, um, you have to be very focused to do it. I gotta be honest with you, my confidence level was really low. Not in the technique, but in my abilities. You know, but you get a good guide. What was I doing right and what was I doing wrong? As far as I'm concerned, you was making a good cast, getting a good drift on your line. You made it all work. So I am thinking that I'm doing something wrong because I'm not catching fish. And it took about an hour to catch that fish, but really persistency is the key. You gotta keep your confidence out. It's true. So I think it was pretty good fishing. Well, we pull off, you know what? Four pound gross to get the day started. I know there's bigger ones out there. Oh, there is. <laughs> You'll find them. There we go. There we go. Right in the pillow of that rock. That yep. was really Perfect. cool. Real nice. Move Some, down. Sometime when they get rid of water, so there, if you look orange, like, yeah. Yeah, that's uh, a no, salmon. That's the, uh, no, uh, They're grills? Grills. Now you want to fight these fish with a really high rod tip, and the reason why is right here. These Atlantics have a nasty habit of trying to get it themselves around the backside of a rock and rub you off like that one just doing right now. Yeah. So with a high rod tip, you have a much better chance of having that leader not get rubbed off on the rock face because they are crafty and they are tricky. Anyway. All right, good job, Wade. Okay. Here, I'm gonna trade you if I may. Whoops. Still got some, still got some kick. Okay. Perfect. Oh, look how clean these fish are, huh? Wet your nice. hands. Nice and shiny. Look at that. It's perfect. Is that a two-year-old fish? Probably two-year-old. Two-year-old? Yeah. Okay, get him back. Oh, see, and you went right back to that rock that he tried to scrape me off Great on. job. Now, the thing that's Oops. important here at uh, Hawk River Outfitters is the way that they like to set up their leader system is basically straight from your fly line to a non-tapered leader. So what I've got here is 10 pound fluorocarbon tied right to the fly line, no taper at all, right to my fly. So when you have fish that are trying to rub around rocks to get themselves free, take the time. Always check your leader. It's one piece of material. It doesn't take you long to switch it up. I've got some chafing right here. I'm gonna put a whole new leader on. I actually got very lucky with that fish. And the reason why is I saw that fish porpoise right, be right beside that boulder and I decided to work it a lot. And I was going to start to work where I saw the fish porpoise, but I remembered somebody telling me that, you know, a lot of times a fish will sit in the front of a boulder or in the pillow that the water creates. And sure enough, my first drift through, I thought I was done all the way, but that fish had picked up the fly and apparently was holding onto it. And when I went to pull up, hook the fish. Another gross, can't complain. Atlantic salmon runs in the Hawks start from mid to late June. Fish that enter the system have done so looking towards spawning. As with many salmonids, once this mating behavior begins, the need for feed is reduced to zero. So how is it possible to catch fish that aren't eating? Biologically, as I understand it, from the time an Atlantic salmon comes into the river and spawns and leaves the river again, they don't eat. Um, so the reason that they take a fly is part of the mystique of Atlantic salmon fishing because we don't know. You know, sometimes you can fish over dozens or hundreds of fish and fish all day and not have one take and sometimes you'll make one cast and they'll grab it on the first cast. So, you know, it's whether it goes back to when they were a par in the spring or in, the, in their early stages of life and eating little flies in the river uh, might be part of it. Uh, you know, maybe part of it's what they eat in the ocean and they strike at things, but why they take a fly, I don't know. And that's, again, if you did know and if you could figure it all out, 
you probably wouldn't go fishing because then it would be just catching and, and not fishing. But whatever causes them to attack a fly, it sure is worth every cast. No matter the size of the fish, Atlantic salmon put on an unbelievable show. You know, we've been working hard all day to try to hook one of these Atlantics. We've been at it for about three hours. Haven't seen a thing. All of a sudden, Mike Crosby hooks a giant and that fish wrapped around a stick and busted off. The sun's starting to peek out a little bit. I wonder if that has something to do with it. But a couple casts after Mike lost his fish, I tie into this bad boy. Yeah! Big fish. Yeah, nice beauty. Ooh. Ooh. I don't think he was ready yet. <laughs> <laughs> That's a beauty. This is anywhere you go. A fish of a lifetime. He's still raring to get going. Just amazing. Okay, we're going to let him go and uh, go for a bigger one. There you go. Perfect. Nice. My biggest Atlantic. Good How job. awesome is Great that? Great job. Man, Beautiful. what a week so far. It's only day two. Beautiful. <laughs> A big salmon just came and whacked that one. Like a big one. Tried to take a chunk out of him. See a quick release. Just like that. Well, the lodge itself is pretty basic structure. We've got you know a main camp and, and a side camp. We accommodate eight guests at a time. We could take more than that, but that offers the best opportunity for people to get great fishing water. And uh, we keep our four guides and two cooks on staff at the same time. And then we've got a spike camp up the other branch of this river. And we have a tent camp on this branch of the river so that we can keep people in different locations and give them a real outdoor experience. It doesn't get more rustic than this. This is it. This is a true, pure wilderness. The way that Wade has taught me how to fish for Atlantic salmon here on the Hawk River is twofold. It's actually very easy, and it's also got a very difficult element to it. Let's start with the easy part. The easy part is technically fishing for these fish. What you want to do when you approach your pool is find out exactly where you want to stand to effectively be able to swing the entire pool. Now, when you start swinging the pool, you want to start as close to you as humanly possible, and with a rod tip moderately high, let that fly skitter across the surface of the water. You should be able to see it. Now with the higher rod tip, that will bring the, the fly to the surface, but you also have tied a riffle hitch onto the very tip of the fly at the eye, and that will also help rise that fly up on the surface of the water. Drive salmon crazy. What you do is once you've swung it across the part that you want to fish, you let it go across, you take out two to six inches more of line, and you bring it across and back. You effectively fish that again, right across, two to six inches out again, and one more time. Now, what you're doing here is you're effectively dissecting the river inch by inch. Now, these fish are very particular, and sometimes they're downright cranky. So what you wanna do is you do not wanna have a foot of difference between the last fly presentation because you might actually pass it over top of a fish's head. But if you go slowly and methodically, inch by inch or two inches or four inches by four inches, you're eventually gonna put that fly in the strike zone. Now here's the difficult part, and it relates to the inch by inch theory. 
is that you have to stay focused throughout the entire thing. If you lose focus throughout any part of the drift, you know that that's when a 20 pound Atlantic is gonna come up and crush your fly. So you need to watch it all the time. And when that bite happens, be it a suck down or a violent smash, hang on, buckle up, because it's gonna be a wild ride. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> really does not matter how big or how small Atlantics are. Every single one is just a ton of fun. The last couple of times we've been out, it's been really cloudy. And uh, this is the first real sign of sunshine we've had. I walked in here like we were fishing clouds all over again and I didn't respect the sun. What do, what do you have to keep in mind when the sun comes out when you approach a pool? You always stand back further from the pool. Your shadow is not casting in the water, disturbing the fish in the pools. And do I, have to, do I have to shorten up the presentation too? Instead of four or six inches, goes to like make it smaller make and smaller? It, make it smaller, fish. They're a little fish more wary, are they? Yes, well, they can see your shadow and they'll move at the pools if you stand too close. Another grills? Another grills. Got some sea lice on it. Shit, salt water. Right out of the salt water. Perfect. He's ready to go. <laughs> See ya. <laughs> So the setup that we used here at Hawk River for Atlantic Salmon is basically, you know, similar to that of a steelhead outfit. What I've got here is a nine foot three, eight weight, fast action fly rod. Um, on the reel side, we've got the Abel Super seven to eight. I like the large arbor because these fish are very fast and very dynamic. And if they come at you, you need that large arbor to be able to pick up. And the fly line used is a eight weight steelhead and Atlantic salmon floating line. You have to note that while fishing in Labrador, you have to have floating line. It's against the regulations if you have anything other than a floating line. The leader material that we've got is a single taper, 10 pound fluorocarbon leader. It's really that simple. You get out there, riffle hitch or bomber throw, and man, you can catch Atlantic salmon all day long with one of these outfits. So I wanted to run through the fly selection that we used while fishing Atlantic salmon here on the Hawk River. Number one was a selection of flies that we actually tied a hitch to, a riffle hitch, which allows these flies to skitter across the top of the surface, driving Atlantic salmon actually absolutely crazy. This is called the Undertaker. We also used a fly called the old tried and true Blue Charm. Next was the Green Butt Bug. Not to be overshadowed by the Black Bear Green Butt. And we also tried, for me, one of the first times I've ever done it is thrown a bomber. A bomber is a top water exclusive fly that you add float into that so it sits high on the water column right on the surface and these fish come up and just smack it. You know the riffle hitch and the bomber are so exciting because they are very visual. You get to see these giant salmon come up and engulf them. If you haven't tried it, get the selection of flies and put them to use. How was that special delivery right there, huh? <laughs> Good job. <laughs> well, it might be the smallest fish of the week, but on tricky conditions like this, look, the fly just popped out. Yep. Tricky conditions like this, I'll give you that. It doesn't matter. Sea lice. Sea lice, brand new fish, right into the system. This is what you come to Labrador for. Awesome, awesome. Atlantic salmon. Wow, what a trip, what a trip. Thank you very much, way to appreciate it. 
Listen, if you want a trip of a lifetime, you need to come to Labrador, Canada, Hawk River Outfitters, and experience all that they have to offer. It is truly incredible. Hey, thanks for watching the new Fly Fisher. For more in our series, log on to www.newflyfisher.com. We'll see you on the river. Hi, I'm Mark Melnick. If you enjoyed this video, do me a favor, hit the like button and subscribe today. Now we're putting up brand new videos all the time. So if you want to be notified when a new one goes up, click that bell icon and it'll come to you as soon as it's uploaded.